U.S. Senator Ron Johnson brought together a panel of five individuals who suffered neurological damage after taking a COVID vaccine. They, they just want to be seen. They want their stories heard. They would like to be believed. One of them was a 12-year-old girl who took the Pfizer shot and has been debilitated ever since. This is Maddie. First, thank you, um, Senator Johnson, for the opportunity to share Maddie's story and to all of you for your willingness to listen. My name is Stephanie, and this is my daughter, Maddie, and we live in Ohio. On January 20th, Maddie received her second dose of the Pfizer COVID vaccine as a participant in the clinical trial for 12 to 15 year olds. Before Maddie got her final dose of the vaccine, she was a healthy 12 year old who got straight A's um, and had lots of friends. She had a life. She was energetic. She was not like this. Upon receiving the second shot, Maddie immediately felt pain at the injection site. And over the next 24 hours, she developed severe abdominal and chest pain. And the way she described the chest pain, and I quote, it feels like my heart is being ripped out through my neck. She had painful electrical shocks down her neck and spine that forced her to walk hunched over. She had extreme pain in her fingers and toes. It actually made them turn white and they were cold whenever you touched them. My husband immediately took her to the ER as instructed by the vaccine trial nurse. The diagnosis stated adverse effect of vaccine initial encounter. Over the next two and a half months, her abdominal muscle and nerve pain became unbearable. She had developed additional symptoms that included gastroparesis, nausea and vomiting, erratic blood pressure and heart rate, memory loss, she mixes up words, brain fog, headaches, dizziness, fainting, she fell and hit her head, and then um, seizures. She developed verbal and motor tics. She had loss of feeling from the waist down and muscle weakness. Drastic changes in her vision, urinary retention and loss of bladder control, severely irregular and heavy menstrual cycles, and eventually she had to have an NG tube put in to get nutrition. So because they couldn't figure it out, one physician labored, labeled her as having functional neurologic disorder, saying it was due to anxiety. This concerned us and we didn't agree with it because she doesn't have the anxiety, look at her. I mean, what 13 year old can sit here calmly, okay? If they have anxiety or mental issues. At one point, they even tried to admit her to a mental hospital. I was fighting doctors trying to get them to listen to what was happening to her and not say she's crazy. Over the past five months, Maddie has been to the ER nine times and has been hospitalized three times for a total of two months in the hospital. What I want to ask, Maddie volunteered for the Pfizer trial. Why? Why aren't they researching her to figure out why this happened? So other people don't have to go through this. Instead, they're just seeing it's mental. All we want is for Maddie to be seen, heard, and believed because she has not been. She was totally fine before this. She did the right thing trying to help everybody else, and they're not helping her. And now, the shocking response. Stay in your own lane. That's the message from a trio of Wisconsin doctors to Senator Ron Johnson. Senator Ron Johnson is extremely out of place. Reckless and misleading. The chances of dying from COVID-19 is many, many times greater than the chance of serious side effects from a COVID-19 vaccine. We previously showed step by step that the chance of death from COVID was essentially zero in teenagers, but the backlash continued. As physicians, we urge Senator Johnson to stop spreading baseless disinformation. How can a doctor call Maddie suffering baseless disinformation? As shocking as this is to hear, there is yet one more unbelievable twist to this story. Four months after Maddie's disability began, Pfizer published the results of its trial in the prestigious New England Journal of Medicine. There was no mention of Maddie's severe reaction, and the authors concluded that the shot had a favorable safety profile. When asked about her communication with Pfizer, Maddie's mom said, We have gone directly through the doctor, but it sounds like it doesn't matter if I would have contacted Pfizer because nobody else is getting responses from them. 
This begs the question, how many other cases of disability has Pfizer brushed aside? And if Maddie really was the only one, out of 1,131 participants, then mass vaccination could cause over 17,500 disabilities in just 12 to 15-year-olds. For a virus that is less harmful to teenagers than the flu, how can this possibly be acceptable? And why is Pfizer turning a blind eye to Maddie's suffering? The former editor-in-chief of the New England Journal of Medicine explains. Mm -hmm. Their mission is to sell profitable drugs, not necessarily good drugs, valuable drugs, profitable drugs. That yeah. is their mission, Absolutely. to sell drugs any way that's legal. Many of them have done it in illegal ways as, as well. But they know how to behave. They mm. just don't find it profitable to, to behave that way. For this reason, she wrote in 2009 that it is simply no longer possible to believe much of the clinical research that is published or to rely on the judgment of trusted physicians or authoritative medical guidelines. Does this mean we should throw out the baby with the bathwater? Of course not. But the least we can do is to share Maddie's story and give voice to the injured children who remain unseen and unheard. If you found this valuable, be sure to subscribe and visit our channel for more videos on The Second Perspective.